The first presentation is by Dr. Pei Shen Zhang. Uh, Pei Shen Zhang received his PhD in geophysics from MIT, like many others here, I guess. And during the following years, he made his postdoc in Nevada University. After which, he moved to Institute of Geology at the China Earthquake Administration. And in 2004, he became the director of the institute. Sang's research focus is on present-day tectonic deformation of China mainland, the growth and the dynamics of the Tibetan Plateau, near tectonics and climate change, and geological interpretation of GPS data. We all see in his names being referred to in the presentations we had in this morning. Since 2008, he is a member of the National Expert Committee for the Ventron Earthquake, which is also in the theme of his presentations to, presentation today, focusing on mechanisms for mountain building in the eastern margin of the Tibetan Plateau. So, please, Peishan Sang. I'll leave the right. Thank you. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to uh, thank the organization committee for inviting me to give this talk. I would, <clears throat> I would, <clears throat> I would like also to take the, this opportunity to thank Peter Morna for getting me into the scientific world and for teaching me how to do science. And this benefits my entire scientific career. Uh, okay, the title of my presentation, a uh, slight change into the creating high mountains through partitioned pure shear crustal thickening. I will use the 2008 Wenchuan earthquake uh, as an example to, to show the formation of the Lumen Shan. <clears throat> okay, uh, we all know uh, most of the uh, mountain range in the world uh, result from a horizontal contraction um, <coughs> uh, by convergence uh, of the tectonic plates. For example, uh, the, the, uh, the Himalaya. <coughs> and uh, the different... Eh? Oh, I don't know. Okay, uh, the deformation taken place along the, this fault, which has a deep angle of, of uh, about a, a 12 degree, and with the convergence of 18 to 20 millimeter per year. And we can see, as we saw this morning, and the Himalaya, the mountain of the Himalaya, is made of by a pile of the crustal material from the uh, Indian plates, and also uh, a very deep fallen basin present in front of the Himalaya. Uh, <clears throat> similarly, in the intraplate uh, uh, geological setting, for example, in Tianshan, uh, we see also the horizontal convergence about seven to nine millimeters per year, and the uh, slip taking place along the faults with about a 20 degree dipping angle. And uh, uh, similarly, the Tianshan Mountain also formed by uh, the material of the Tarim Basin and the Jungar Basin. And uh, the Foreign Basin, fracture Foreign Basin, present along the northern side of the Tianshan Mountain and also on the southern side of the Tianshan Mountain. However, <coughs> if, we, if we look at uh, the east margin of the Tibetan Plateau, we see a huge mountain rise abruptly from the Sichuan Basin with a very steep dip uh, of uh, about 4,000 meter relief. And uh, like, just like a step, you know, you, you are across from Sichuan Basin to the Lumensan and the eastern uh, Tibet. Uh, however, this steep mountain uh, <coughs> is subject to very minor or almost uh, all uh, neglectable horizontal shortening, and also the Sichuan Basin is not a fracture fallen basin. 
So, <clears throat> so the problem is, what are the geological and the geodynamic processes that build the lumen sand? <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> There are a number of models has been proposed to explain the formation of the Lumensan mountain. Uh, the one of the very popular model proposed by uh, Wiki and Clark Bitchfield and is the low crust of floor model. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, you know, this model has been mentioned uh, this morning. I'm sure Wiki is going to talk about it in her talk. You know, another popular model would be the lumens and mountains formed by thrust floating and shortening in the upper crust. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, uh, Harbour and Shaw from Howard, they proposed this kind of model and followed by uh, uh, the other models. In 2008, uh, a devastating earthquake occurred along the lumens and fault. And this picture shows the pro prosperous town of Yinxiu has been totally destroyed. And uh, another, th th this picture is the town of Beichuan. And uh, the landslide, the huge landslide uh, induced by the earthquake buried a part town of Beichuan. And uh, the, 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 the buildings collapsed like this. And uh, you, can, you can even see, if you look carefully, uh, people, you know, people, you know, was buried by this uh, collapsed uh, buildings. Uh, this earthquake claimed uh, more than 80,000 uh, casualties and resulted in uh, uh, significant uh, sig uh, economical losses. Uh, however, and, uh, the interseismic and the co seismic deformation associated with uh, this earthquake provided a, a rare opportunity you know, to let us uh, <coughs> to probe the geological process uh, uh, to form, you know, this uh, <coughs> this uh, uh, lumens and mountain. Uh, my presentation consists of uh, the four parts, and uh, first of all, let's look at uh, the primary future associated with uh, uh, the uh, the Wenchuan earthquake. Uh, this is a, a simplified tectonic map of the lumens and and uh, uh, its vicinities. The lumens and fault consist of three strands. And uh, from west to east, the Wenchuan Maoxian fault uh, did not rupture during the earthquake and it's unlikely to be active. And uh, in the central one, uh, which we call Yinxiu Beichuan fault, is the main seismogenic fault uh, that has been ruptured for 240 kilometers during the earthquake. And uh, the, the, the near the range front is another fault we call the Guanxian <coughs> uh, and the Jiangyu Fault. Uh, this fault has been ruptured at only 70 kilometers uh, during the Wenchuan earthquake. And uh, the, 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 GPS, the GPS vectors uh, in this map is uh, relative to transmission. And you can see the almost uh, no deformation or no deformation between transmission and lumen sand. And uh, the deformation all occurred uh, west of this fault, uh, which we call Lunzi Ba Fault. But uh, between the Lumen Sand and the Sichuan Basin, almost no uh, pre earthquake uh, uh, deformation. If you look at the historical earthquakes, and we see no non earthquake with a magnitude of over seven occurred along this fault during the past uh, almost 3,000 year history. So, uh, uh, therefore, the, this fault, the earthquake potential of this fault has been estimated very low. And uh, the most uh, 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 prominent feature of the core seismic deformation is narrowly distributed core seismic deformation. Uh, this is, uh, 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 okay, this is uh, the a rupture, and uh, the aftershocks for uh, for the first uh, six months, because uh, the decay, because aftershock decay very very rapidly, so we think uh, the first six months earthquake uh, represent uh, the deformation, significant deformation associated with earthquake. If you look at if we look at uh, the deformation, that the 
the main shock starts from here, propagated almost uh, uh, unilaterally to the northeast direction. The total after shock room is 330 kilometers, and uh, the surface rupture is 240 kilometers. But if we look, if we look at the width, of the after shock, shock room, except at these places that we think maybe maybe are cross fault uh, in these uh, uh, places, and uh, in most of the places, uh, the width of the after shock room uh, is uh, less than 30 kilometer. And uh, if we look at uh, at the uh, uh, depth distribution of the after shocks, this is. Uh, the southern segment, the middle segment, and northern segment, and uh, we, if we plot uh, the depths, uh, you know, this is one-to-one -one plot, and uh, we can see most of the aftershocks occur within the Lumensan uh, lumen fault room, and uh, we don't see any, you, 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 we don't see any uh, low angle uh, uh, thrust fault you know, beneath the Lumensan, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, on the contrary, and uh, the, if we only look at uh, the aftershock distribution, and uh, we see the lumens and fault must be uh, a deep angle or high angle, a reverse fault. So this is a core seismic crust deformation uh, from GPS measurement. And uh, uh, the different color represent the, the, the different scale. And if you look at the <coughs> horizontally, and uh, the the, the significant the de, uh, cause seismic deformation occurred uh, on the vicinity uh, of the surface rupture room. If we draw a cross section and, uh, and plot, uh, plot all the cause seismic displacement into cross section, and, and it looks like this. And uh, the maximum displacement occurred on the initial base transport, and it's decayed very, very rapidly. And uh, when across, the lumens and fault room is almost, uh, almost, you know, you know, only has about, uh, you know, uh, 20 or 30 or no more than uh, uh, 50 millimeter, uh, a mi uh, millimeter, cosmic displacement. And the strong ground motion, and also also show the shaking. Most of the shaking taking place within the lumens and fault room, and uh, and uh, below the fault room. Uh, and uh, you can see the decay very uh, rapidly. You know, another prominent feature is uh, the vertical displacement. And uh, this, fix, this photo shows uh, eight to nine meter high scarp formed during the earthquake. And you can see the, 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 uh, the fresh surface and uh, it's all produced by the, uh, by the 2008 uh, earthquake. And uh, this one is the maximum core seismic vertical offset, which we measured to be nine meter. And uh, this picture uh, is taken before the earthquake. And you can see the flat and the paved yard in front of this building. And this building used to be this, uh, used to be this one. And uh, the, the remnant of, and a part of the paved yard and right now it's here where the people and the tra trappers are. And uh, from this pavement and uh, to about here is uh, nine, mm, nine millimeter per year. So this is a vertical maximum, this vertical displacement that we measured you know, after the earthquake. And uh, this is uh, the maximum horizontal uh, cross seismic displacement. And, uh, and this is uh, Fungal farming field. Uh, you know, local people they grow, grow fungus uh, in this woods. And uh, so, before the earthquake, uh, they make this uh, the farming wall straight because all this is a straight line. And right now, the straight line has been displaced here, and we measure, uh, you know, almost uh, five meter. So the vertical displacement is almost uh, twice the horizontal. Uh, a displacement. And uh, this is uh, <coughs> a distribution of core seismic uh, geological displacement. Uh, and uh, 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 this is uh, along the initial base and fault, the two, the, this 200, uh, um, because uh, we didn't measure the, 
the, the, the other 22 kilometer displacement because it's a feature, it's a feature in some, and uh, you can see uh, the blue dots are vertical displacement, red dots are the horizontal displacements, and uh, you, and uh, we can uh, get five plus minus uh, 0 0.5 meter uh, average uh, vertical displacement and uh, about uh, two meter plus minus 0 0.5 meter horizontal displacement. If we move this part of horizontal displacement to this place, so the geological observation also tells us the vertical displacement is almost twice the horizontal displacement. <clears throat> so to summarize, we think the primary features of core seismic deformation of the 2000 wind triangle earthquake is uh, narrowly disputed core seismic deformation and a prominent vertical displacement. Then the question is, what seismogenic structure at the depths of the lumen sand, below the lumen sand, uh, you know, form this kind of core seismic deformation? Uh, so, uh, the second of my, uh, part of my presentation is the seismogenic structure of the, of the earthquake. You know, after the earthquake, uh, you know, many models have been proposed to account for uh, the seismogenic structures. And uh, this, is, this is taken from either Clark and Wiki, I, I don't remember, maybe take from uh, uh, Wiki. And uh, they think, uh, you know, this is a low, low crust of floor, and uh, because, uh, uh, because of a downward uh, 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 thickening of the crust, and also from the, the, uh, the, the, the upward force, you know, to uplift the, the lumen sand and to create the, this hang or uh, uh, reverse fault. Uh, another very popular uh, model uh, is low angle thrust faulting model. For example, uh, Harbour and Xiao, uh, uh, Jia Dong from Nanjing University, and Xu uh, Xiwei from uh, my institute. And these models require uh, low angle <coughs> thrust fault. Because, what, what, uh, because the, the evidence that they use the, uh, are the following. The first of all, the earthquake uh, uh, fault plane solutions have the fault angle about 30 to 40 uh, degree. And also, they interpret the petroleum uh, seismic explorations, which is uh, uh, 10 meter to 20 meter uh, depth. And uh, what this is, uh, the low angle uh, thrust force in the lumen sand. But the, but the problem is, uh, and if you look at the, the, these models, the vertical scale is not equal to horizontal scale. So, <clears throat> if uh, because uh, the uh, precise location of the mine sharks tells us the epicenter is only eight to ten kilometers away from the initial baseline fault, and the, the focal depth is uh, seventeen to eighteen kilometers. So if the 30, 40 uh, degree deep in uh, thrust fault is the seismogenic fault, we would, we would expect the, the surface rupture in the Sichuan Basin and rather than the initial baseline fault. So, so the low angle thrust fault, thrust fault model cannot, uh, 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 cannot explain uh, the relation between the location of the mine shark and uh, the location of the uh, surface, main surface rupture room. Uh, you know, another <coughs> model, you know, call for uh, or the high angle reverse fault because, it, because when you walk along the surface rupture, you know, what you see is the very deep, you know, you know in many places, uh, even vertical, uh, surface rupture room, and uh, the deep the, the the drilling after after the earthquake, and uh, tells us at uh, uh, depths uh, I don't know I don't know maybe 
maybe uh, 1,030, uh, 300 uh, uh, meter depths, and uh, uh, 700 meter depths, the 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 wind the the wind transport the the incubation fault dips six sixty to seventy degree, and uh, the uh, the result from the tripped <coughs> fault on tripped wheel. Uh, because after the earthquake, a group of uh, uh, seismologists uh, deployed a uh, uh, seismic array to record the tripped seismic wave. This is the wave they observed. And then they modeled uh, this wave. In order to get this wave, that's here, trip photon tripped waves. And they said the photon has to be this wet, and uh, the angle of the photon has to be about 70 degrees. And uh, to the set, to the to the set, to the focal depths, and uh, we see the, the mine shark that is here, and uh, we don't see, you know, if thirty or forty degree uh, 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 thrust fault, we 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 would expect to see the surface rupture here, and rather than here. So, <clears throat> so the fault has to be uh, high angle. Uh, on the other hand. Uh, a geological survey of USGS, uh, uh, CEA in China, and all the, the seismologists, uh, they all give the, the, the fault plan solution, you know, it's uh, uh, the, the 30 to 40 degree dips of the fault. So we think the initial rupture at the focal depth has to be, has to dip at, at about 30 or 40 degrees. Uh, well, the rupture in a shallow part dips Six to seventy degrees. So the model that we proposed is the least strict high angle reverse fault, you know, rather than the plano uh, uh, low angle thrust fault. <coughs> uh, uh, so we also uh, argue this least strict geometry uh, leads to narrowly distributed cold seismic deform deformation and the largely localized vertical uh, displacement uh, near the fault. Then the question is, can we image uh, this uh, listric fault in the uh, uh, crustal depths? So the third part of my uh, talk is the deep crustal structure of the Lumensan fault. And uh, in, in order to answer this question, uh, that question, we conducted a, a deep seismic sounding uh, a profile across the Lumensan. Uh, because of the diff very difficult, very difficult uh, access, you know, to across the entire lumen sand. So unfortunately, our deep, deep seismic sounding um, profile uh, was only able to across 15 kilometer, you know, uh, uh, west of the initial Beichuan fault. We were able to across the Wenchuan Mao Shan fault, and. Uh, uh, it, you know, we use the, 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 the standard method to process uh, the data. And uh, I'm, going to, I'm not going to talk about uh, uh, the detail of the data pre, uh, the process. So this is uh, the result of our deep seismic sounding uh, profile. <clears throat> and uh, what we can clearly see is, uh, the first of all, the, the most prominent feature is the undeformed uh, the Sichuan Basin, and uh, uh, you know, I should mention the the depths has been converted to uh, from the two-way travel time to the depths uh, because we conducted another uh, long seismic refraction uh, profile. We use that velocity constraint to convert uh, the the, uh, the travel time uh, into the uh, depths. So all the way to the to about 12 kilometers, you can see almost no disturbance uh, below the Sichuan Basin. The Guanxian Jiangyu fault is here, and the Yinshu Basin uh, fault is here. And uh, uh, but we also see the you, you know you can see some folding and some uh, some discontinuity of the uh, of the reflectors that we would in, we would interpret as the faults. Uh, and another, uh, uh, another, another thing is the very clear mohole reflection 
below the Sichuan Basin, it's almost the flat, so about 40 kilometers. Then, then when it when it enter the lumen sands start to bending, and it's unclear, you know, uh, below the initial basin fault. But uh, but you can trace to almost to uh, 52 uh, uh, kilometers. And uh, the the low, low crust we can identify, you know, some some reflection uh, features that I will describe in detail below. But uh, but you can see this is uh, uh, north uh, uh, south. Uh, east sources deep in reflectors, and uh, you can also see some accurate reflectors uh, below the Sichuan Basin uh, in the low crust. Uh, our interpretation uh, 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 is this: the deformation in the upper crust and the low crust are completely di uh, different, because in the upper crust that we interpret the Yinshu Basin fault, the Guanxian Jiangyu fault. And, and also a, a, a main decolma fault, uh, which uh, merging to the surface in the Longchen sand. Um, but you, you, you can see uh, without significant uh, 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 displacement. And uh, the, the, the deformation in the low crust is different. Below the lumen sand, we interpret it as a series of uh, north, uh, south, east dipping reflectors uh, below the Sichuan Basin, and we interpret uh, the accurate uh, uh, structures, the, the, the moho is uh, clearly. So, so in the following, I will see, uh, uh, I will show enlarged version, and uh, for in the upper crust of, uh, uh, of Lumen San, and the low crust of Lumen San, as well as the low crust of of the uh, Sichuan Basin. So this is uh, the enlarged, uh, uh, enlarged version of the upper crust of uh, the lumen sand. Uh, we, our inter interpretation uh, started from the surface because uh, uh, you, you can see the, f the, the flat road uh, has been uh, risen about four meters. So this is uh, the surface rupture associated with the 2008 Wenchuan earthquake along the Yinshu Beichuan Fault. So we know exactly where fault uh, is, with, uh, 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 which is here. Then we, we interpret the fault start from here. And then to the depths between uh, uh, four and eight kilometer, and we see an uh, anticline-like feature. And then, so we bring the fault to here. And, and also, you know, you, uh, between eight and 12 kilometers, and we see that the, the, the disruptions of this kind of uh, <coughs> reflectors, uh, you know, the, it's ended here. So we bring the, uh, the fault down to here, then further down into these reflectors. And uh, this, these reflectors are the, uh, are the main uh, detachment fault. We, 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 we interpret it goes and it uh, so ramps up and becomes flat, then ramps up uh, uh, again. For the Guanxian Jiangyu fault, we also start from, uh, uh, from the surface because we know exactly and, 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 uh, this is the surface rupture, you know, less than two, me two meters. <clears throat> And, uh, and also we can identify, we can identify you know, this anticline uh, shaped uh, reflector and, uh, and uh, we, we, we bring the fault here, then merge it to this, uh, this uh, uh, which we call man, uh, uh, man, uh, man decolorment uh, feature. So, <clears throat> so, the, so the upper surface of the lumen sand you know, we interpret it as, uh, 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 as a structure of the, of the uh, thrust force system, uh, which uh, only this part, Guanxian Jiangyu fault and the Yinshu Basin fault, is uh, still active. And uh, the, the main detachment fault and the other split faults is not active because you can see it, it does not, the, the fault here does not uh, offset the uh, the Jurassic uh, no no no, no. 
Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't uh, maybe uh, Cretaceous. Yeah, I think the Cretaceous did not create, uh, did not offset uh, Cretaceous sediments. So, uh, so. Uh, so this part is uh, no longer active. The only active part is the uh, Guanxian Jiangyu Fault and the Yinshu Beishan Fault. So the next is uh, the low crust uh, of uh, the lumen sand. Uh, you can see the prominent, prominent feature is, uh, is the southwest dipping uh, reflectors, so which we interpret as uh, uh, plastic uh, shear, uh, you know, uh, a shear room. Because the because we uh, we do uh, uh, we think the temperature and the pressure at the low crust uh, uh, will not allow the <coughs> bridal, uh fracture to take place. So deformation here must be plastic shear. So the 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 low crust below uh, the Sichuan Basin, and you can see the 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 uh, uh, this domed uh, shape. And we think this, uh, this domed uh, shift reflector represent uh, the deformation during the, early st uh, during the early stage of deformation, uh, which is uh, uh, older than 8 billion years ago, where the Yangtze uh, carton uh, formed. You know, this is associated with the formation of the, the, the Yangtze, uh, Yangtze carton. You know, about it, you know, that's uh, no significant displaced uh, uh, deformation occurred uh, in Sichuan Basin. So this is uh, our, you know, uh, uh, our interpretation. I didn't draw this horizontal lens, and this is a geological interpretation. So we think the least reverse folding and folding in upper crust of lumen sand uh, <coughs> typify the brittle deformation above the, the uh, we think that's a, a brittle and ductile trend, a transition room at a depth about uh, 20 kilometers. And uh, below the tra transition room, deformation uh, appears to be characterized by uh, uh, eastward or southeastward dipping plastic uh, creeping or uh, uh, rheological shearing. And the upper crust beneath the Sichuan Basin has no has not subject to tectonic deformation since 8 billion years ago. <clears throat> and uh, uh, we think the <clears throat> lithosphere, or at least uh, uh, the crust of eastern, uh, Tibet, uh, uh, eastern Tibet, you know, allow the internal deformation. Uh, this is uh, the s wave velocity structure of uh, the eastern Tibet, uh, you know, across eastern Tibet, Lumen San to the Sichuan Basin. This is, uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 this is done by joint inversion of uh, uh, seismic uh, <coughs> receiver function and uh, ambient noisy. And uh, you can see the lumen sense here, the Eastern Tibetan Plateau, the, the low velocity char characterized the, the low crust of the, uh, uh, of the Eastern Tibetan Plateau. And uh, the, uh, we see the low velocity <coughs> structure in the upper crust of the Sichuan Basin, but uh, but uh, it's a low crust and the upper mantle is very it's very rapid uh, <coughs> has very rapid shear wave velocity, so it's very strong uh, Sichuan Basin, and uh, the 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 refraction profile uh, across lumens and also show the strong uh, faster <coughs> seismic speed. Below the uh, uh, in the low crust and, uh, and upper band of the Sichuan Basin and the low uh, in the eastern, eastern Tibetan Plateau. And uh, the magnetotelluric profile and uh, shoot the same thing. This is, uh, 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 this is low uh, elastic resistivity uh, zone you know, below uh, the Sichuan Basin, uh, below the eastern Tibet and uh, the, the higher. <coughs> This is the layer below the Sichuan Basin. So to summarize, and we <coughs> suggest or we propose a model uh, for the eastern margin of the Tibetan Plateau, and we think the combination of upward least trick reverse folding in a brittle upper crust and a downward ductile shearing in a viscous low crust, 
you know, uh, internally accommodated the, the eastward growth of the Tibetan Plateau to thick the lithosphere of the Lumen Sun and uh, to, to form the high topography uh, of Lumen Sun. <clears throat> so uh, if this is uh, correct, and uh, so we think the rule of the Hangul uh, Listric Reverse Faulting is very important uh, uh, information uh, of the high mountains of uh, uh, the Lumen Sun. So, <clears throat> so we speculate uh, the rule uh, of the high angle listric reverse, uh, uh, listric reverse folding is to transfer overwhelming horizontal deformation of the eastern Tibet into significant vertical displacement in lumen sand. Uh, uh, in order to uh, explore our speculations, and uh, we use the viscoelastic finite element model to simulate the intra and the cross seismic deformation uh, of the lumen sand zone. Uh, 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 this is our uh, finite element model, and we, uh, 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 you know, this is uh, lumen sand and uh, the eastern Tibet. We, 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 we divide the eastern Tibet into two parts because we think, uh, 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 we, we think the regions uh, east of the Lone Zipa Fort is different uh, from western part of uh, the Lone Zipa Fort. And each region, we assign uh, the different uh, uh, cross, uh, uh, material uh, parameters. And for the, uh, for the Lumen Sun, we uh, danced our uh, grid you know, into uh, this kind of... We, we also model fault you know, uh, into the... the the hang or least trick reverse photo. So this is another two straight line. I should draw more, <coughs> uh, you, know, you know, this is a curve, not a, a two lines. Uh, you know, we use uh, the core seismic uh, vertical displacement and also the inter, inter seismic deformation. This is uh, the vertical deformation across lumen sand. And this is a shortening from GPS. The vertical deformation is uh, from leveling, repeat leveling, and uh, the, the horizontal shortening is from uh, GPS. So we use these constraints uh, to, <coughs> uh, to our uh, modeling. So uh, these are the best uh, results that we can simulate. You know, it's, uh, not, it's not good, but, uh, you know, but it, uh, uh, but it is uh, acceptable, I should say. Uh, we use uh, grid search method to invert uh, a modeling parameter. Uh, you know, for each region, uh, we think uh, the, 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 the most important uh, parameter are uh, Young's modulum pressure ratio and, uh, uh, and viscosity, and also you know, uh, density, and uh, these four uh, parameters. For each region, we, you know, we fix all the other parameters, like one parameter uh, to change. Uh, then when we, f we find uh, the best one. And, uh, and then we fix uh, 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 this value, this parameter, and other, uh, and other parameters, then, then let, let other, uh, 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 other parameter change. Then we, you know, the invert, you know, another value of uh, material parameters. So all the, the parameters here are the best parameter that we can find, you know, use our grid search uh, method. Uh, use that, uh, we calculated the velocity field across the uh, initial baseline fold. This is the core seismic velocity field across the initial baseline fold. And, uh, <coughs> And you can see on the Honeywell of the fault, the core seismic slip increase uh, uh, toward uh, the fault and uh, reach the maximum at the fault. Uh, another thing we also, not, uh, we also noticed is that uh, the angle, the angle uh, of the slip vector uh, increased from uh, about 20 degree to almost 80 degree or even vertical. Uh, near the fault, and uh, and we can also change from uh, more horizontal, more horizontal 
two more vertical. So we think you know, this uh, velocity field associated with the 2008 uh, Wenchuan earthquake may represent the long-term behavior of the deformation in the lumens and fault. So that uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, least uh, uh, geometry structure transfer the horizontal uh, compression, hor horizontal moment uh, into the vertical moment of the lumen sand. And uh, if we contour the angle of the slip vector, and uh, we see that you know, from 24 you know, to almost 80, 80 70, so, so, uh, so the, uh, so, so the vector from more, almost horizontal to almost uh, uh, vertical. So in this way, the, uh, the eastward horizontal <coughs> growth of the Tibetan plateau has been transferred into, out, uh, into upward motion uh, of the lumen sand. So this is, this is probably the, uh, the geological process taking place in the upper crust of lumen sand you know, to form such a mountain with a steep range front and with a very uh, small uh, horizontal uh, uh, contraction. So, so we also calculated uh, <coughs> the principal uh, strength. So uh, this is uh, the maximum uh, contraction, uh, 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 contraction strength. And uh, you can see you know, in, a, in, a, uh, in a gentle dipping uh, section of the least fault, and uh, the uh, the axis is almost parallel to the uh, to the fault, and uh, the extension the extension of strain, and almost vertical. So this uh, kind of strain field, you know, in, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, enable a slip on this uh, uh, this uh, part of the fault, then may trigger the fault on the. A steep deep in fault. So this is another. That's another story. Uh, uh, I'm not going to discuss uh, in uh, today. So to summarize, uh, we think an important rule of high angle district is 14 uh, is to transfer horizontal uh, growth of the eastern Tibet into significant vertical displacement in lumen sand. So this can explain the presence of a steep mountain front. Uh, you know, for the four kilometer with negligible coal for and fracture subsidence. I think, you know, you know why there's no foreign basin in front, in front of Lumen San? Because the east of the growth, horizontal growth of the Tibetan plateau has been transferred to a vertical moment of the, uh, 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 of the Lumen San. So this is uh, the uh, conclusion. So we think the formation of the Lumen San may be better understood in terms of a partitioned pure shear thickening in which the high angle district, this high angle district reverse folding of brittle upper crust is linked to the moment of more viscous lithosphere mantle or the, or the low crust through plastic shearing and ductile thickening of the rheologically deformable low crust. So I think this is the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you.